Twinton Lions away on Sunday, the first away road trip of the, the season. John, Haywood Road, it's uh, quite a, a big expansive playing surface. It's a very big pitch, yeah. I think it's maximum dimensions width-wise, length-wise, and it's five metres in goal. So, yeah, it's, it's a big pitch. Uh, but it, it is a bit claggy as well in the middle, you know. It's, it's a rugby union pitch, basically. And uh, it's been churned up a fair bit in the middle. So, with the weather forecast of plenty of rain as well in the meantime, I'm expecting it to be pretty hard going in that in that centre channel. So, uh, you know, that may well as gain affect our rotation policy, etc. But... Uh, you know, we, we do realise it's a, it, it is a good ground to play it and we're certainly looking forward to it on, on this coming Sunday. What can we expect from Swinton on Sunday? Obviously, they're coming off uh, the back of a very disappointing uh, defeat away at Sheffield. They're better than that, I can tell you that, uh, Mick. They're much better than that and, and they will be very disappointed. And that's when teams are dangerous because uh, they'll have had a, a roasting off Stuart Little, I've no doubt about that. There'll have been some soul-searching by the individuals concerned. And I'm pretty certain they'll bring in some Wigan players on dual registration as well. So it will be a very different Swinton that we face this coming Sunday uh, that, than went to Sheffield last Sunday. And you add to that as well, they're at home for the first home fixture. There's every reason for them to play well, and I'm certain that they will. And that's what we're preparing for. We're preparing for Swinton to be at their best. Do you think there'll be any sort of fallout, come back from the, the Will Hope situation? I, I, I don't know about that. I mean, obviously... We, We've read what, what Will's tweeted out and we've, we've read the sort of what's been reported by you journalists. But, uh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he's a player as well and I wish him all the best and I hope he, is, he, he recovers well, he recovers speedily and he has a, a long and fruitful career in the future. In terms of the current injury situation, John, uh, has there been any more developments with, with Joe Keyes now the club have de have identified the problem? Yeah, well, well I mean, he's, he's looking good and he's, he's been out on the field this week, so that, that's a plus point. And Dalton Grant's making good progress, Callum Bustin is, Ollie Wilson's having the pins out of his operation on his, on his, uh, on his, on his, his, his uh, wrist. And obviously we've got uh, Ross Peltier who's making good progress, so it's, it's looking good. There's nobody ready for this week. Uh, but I can see in a week or two weeks' time, will our troops will be bolstered once again by one or two returnees. And obviously, more headaches for yourself. Yeah, it's good headaches. I like those headaches. Uh, the worst headaches, Mick, are when uh, you scratch your head and you haven't got a team to pick. Well, that's a lot worse than having lots of players to pick from and lots of players in good form to pick from. One question I forgot to ask you last week, John, when we were building up towards the season is obviously yourself, you're, the, you're quite synonymous with the, the Challenge Cup and, and the underdogs. How does the Bradford Bulls plan to approach the new 1895 Cup this season? Well, first of all, Mick, it's a fair bit down the, the line. So, in all honesty, we're not thinking about it this moment in time. We, we focus solely on the first four games. Initially, it was the Featherston game. Then we've said, right, we'll, we'll re, rejudge ourselves after the first four games, which obviously will include two away trips, uh, Swinton and Sheffield, and another tough home game against the York City Knights, who performed really, really well last week against Toronto. And we feel we'll be able to re-evaluate and, and, and we'll have a real good look at ourselves after those first four games. But initially, it's all about that. And, and in terms of those four games, John, there's a real chance... Um, should you get the result on Sunday, albeit two tough games coming up, that you can really start the season, uh, you know, hundred percent. Yeah, well, that's what you know. You want to win every game you're playing, uh, but I'm certain that Sheffield will be very buoyant. Uh, Swinton will be wanting to bounce back, and York will be very buoyant as well because you look at York fixtures and. Yes, they lost to Toronto, but it was a very admirable performance, and I'm sure James Ford was happy with that. But it's in every likelihood they'll win their next two games, so it'll make it a pretty juicy fixture that one. So uh, you know, the, yes, we can look at ourselves doing that, but yes, we've got to consider as well and look at where the opposition are and what the opposition are doing as well. And John, the Betfred Championship, it started with a bang. I think if you had all the attendances up together, just short of eighteen thousand an aggregate average of just under 3,000. There's not many sports that can boast for a second-tier competition an average crowd of nearly 3,000. No, it's tremendous. And I, th I thought what we saw on the field of play was good as well. You know, so it's, uh, it really is. It's what we expected. It's a high standard of rugby. It's a competitive standard of rugby. And it's well-supported and, and long may it last.